Hey everybody, so I'm pretty excited this video because I finally got a fire alarm pan. It's gonna be right here. So I'm already planning I'm after school, maybe not a little later after school because I'm having a friend over. I'm gonna move this to like somewhere. So the current setup is a power supply running through these. These would bridge the circuit and then up to a sync module. And if I were to pull it, it would work and it would be in sync. But I don't want to because this is a pretty loud system. I have a remote strobe in the bathroom as well as another horn strobe and another pole in this room. That command strip uh, didn't adhere all too well, so I'm fixing that. In a f all right, so you might be able to tell, but the intro and the next part of this video was recorded very early in the morning and very late at night. I am not peak very early in the morning and very late at night, so that's why I'm very monotone and I'm not great at explaining things. Alright everybody, so a quick little update. The shelf has been moved. I'm wearing up these for when the panel gets here. I'm going to test it on the floor before I mount it. So, uh, yeah, I also figured out how end-of-line resistors worked. So, I just bought some, like, 24-gauge speaker wire. Both circuits in this room are going to be my end-of-line. So, the back plate I've labeled, you see it says... EOL, end of line, as well as both pull station junction boxes. I wrote Z, uh, Z1 indicating as zone 1, as well as this is going to be the end of line pull station. So you see this also is Z1. In this scene here, I unbox what I think is a working Firelight MS2. The seller accidentally sent me a broken Firelight MS4, and all this panel would do is, well, the piezo buzzer was stuck on continuously. I'm not talking about the trouble where it has, like, you know, 60 BPM or 120 BPM. It, the piezo does what the system does when it resets. The rest of the system seemed to be responsive, except for the NAC wasn't outputting any power when the system goes into alarm. So I return this panel to the seller and he gives me the correct panel. And relays make that noise. I don't think they're supposed to make that noise. I'll hit acknowledge and it, oh, it should respond. Oh, it's not even, oh, there it is. And it will respond to my acknowledge. I will also switch this on. And the panel will shut up. The panel will get an alarm, but the strobe connected isn't doing anything. So I. Oh god, that's so annoying. Next scene you're about to see is me testing the correct panel. I decided to not unbox it on camera um, due to the seller sending me a shipping label in the box. I didn't want to get my address or his address leaked. Let's see if this works. Hey, look at that. All right. The buzzer sounds a little weird. So, acknowledge. See, that's working. If I hit silent, it should stop. You're buzzing. It's the sync module. It's weird. It's silence. There we go. Alarm silence. So, yeah, that panel works, which is good. Um, I'll explain what I did with the door in a second, because that's not- that's the MS- that's the MS4 door. Alright, so now for door explanation time. Um, so, if you were to open this... Open the door! You can see that the MS4 is crossed out. I tried making the MS2 cross out for some reason. Um, the MS4 door was a lot nicer than the MS2 door. So what I did is I stuck a little piece of plastic that says MS2. I just kind of stuck it on the MS4 and sent the MS4 back with the old crappy screwed up door. So this holds really well. It looks good. This panel looks great. And next step is to mount it on the wall. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually installing a bunch of the devices currently. 
So, uh, yeah. So the reason why that piezo buzzer sounded a little weird in that brief test I did is because all of this crap was inside of it. I don't know what it is. I don't know where this panel is stored. I don't know its origins. But the piezo buzzer sounds nice and clear. I used a can of compressed air and vacuum to clean it. Uh, I really didn't need to, but I decided to do it anyways. The next scene you're about to see is me reassembling the panel, essentially. I had my dad install drywall anchors and mount the box on the oh, wall. This, you crazy mother Alright everyone, so I just time lapsed that. Let's see if this works. Hmm. That's weird. It looks like we have a knack fault. Huh. Hmm. Wonder what's up with that. We don't have any troubles on the zones. Hey everyone, so it turns out, um, maybe wiring fire alarms late at night isn't a great idea. So the polarity was reversed from the NAC to the sync module. So I swapped the polarity, and as you can see, there's no more NAC fault light. There's still a system trouble and a power trouble, because I don't have batteries. That is going to be next video. Here's an example of the end-of-line resistors. So, as you can see... I only have one resistor at the panel, and that's because Zone 2 is currently not in use. I do plan on getting smoke detectors for this panel, but I don't have the money right now. So everything else is at, well, the end of line. So the end of line for the system, uh, both devices, and also the third device I'm going to get, the smoke detector, these three are all going to be end of line. So this has a resistor on it, and that has a resistor on it. Now, the advantage to putting it at the end of line is even basic panels can do something called monitoring, kind of. I think that's what it's called. I forgot the exact term of it. So basically, let's say you have somebody tampering with their fire alarm equipment. The panel will go into trouble and you'll have a knack fault. This is the same for zones, but it's a pain in the butt to take off pull stations. There you go, it'll shut up. All right, this is what y'all wanted to see. Silence. There we go. I think I accidentally put one on high volume, guys. You could see it worked. It was extremely, extremely loud. That scared the p out of me. I didn't know it would be that loud. The, I believe these are actually both set on low volume. So as you can see, I'm going to reset the pull station now. Oh, there we go. Never actually resetted it like that. Uh, zone 1 can't re-alarm because these are both... Actually, well, now it can, but I'm not gonna. There we go. And there's our... Later that day, I go over to a friend's house and I leave the panel plugged in. Around 24 hours after the panel has been plugged in, I get a call from my dad saying that the panel is beeping. I actually did leave the key in the lock because I expected something like this to happen. I don't know where the first half of this video went, but here I'm checking the dip switches to see if trouble reminder is on, which indeed it is off. Let me look at some of these dip switches. I don't know if I have like trouble, five trouble reminder. So let's see, switch, switch one, five. Yeah, trouble reminder's off. So unless like the system got reset, which it might've, 
apparently it started beeping. Um, according, I, I got a call from my dad, and he's like, hey, your thing's beeping, so I gave him instructions. I actually did leave the key in the door. Uh, like I said, science, science and instructions are inside the panel. You This scared the out of me. So, this was reset yesterday before 5, and it's 5. So, I'm going to have to reset the system every day so that it, I prevent it from going back into trouble. It was actually, uh, at first, it was the quicker supervisory march. Or supervisory, not I. It was I was thinking of March time. It's kind of like the March time tempo, like 144 BPM, where it goes beep 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 like every half second. Um, but then it switched back into the normal trouble. I go. That's gonna be a pain to blur out that thing. But it's really weird. Could bypass the battery if I wanted to, but I kind of don't because I actually already did this to the battery connector. I made this little battery jumper so that it's gonna be wired in series. Thanks for watching everyone. That about does it for me for the part one. Next part, we're gonna be installing batteries. I have two 12 volt, seven amp hour. Um, apparently they're meant for a gate opener, but they'll work in the fire alarm panel. Like I said, we're gonna have four parts. Uh, you watch part one, the panel installation. Part two, batteries. Part three, smoke detectors. And part four is actually, and I just figured this out today, I'm gonna be replacing the speaker wire with actual fire alarm cable. Um, it is code for fire alarm wiring to be 18 gauge minimum, and the system is wired in 24 gauge as well as it's not fire alarm wire. And I think it'd actually look a lot cooler if it was fire alarm wire. As well as I'm probably gonna clone a few of these fire light keys. Actually, maybe maybe buying more fire light keys would be cheaper. I haven't decided. So uh, yeah, just for fun, I'm gonna test this pull station as well. There we go. So yeah, that was the other pull station. Now, this is how you reset the system. Because I believe it won't go back into alarm because the circuit's already closed. It won't, no, because the circuit is already closed. So, yeah, what you're gonna need to do, since both pull stations are on the same zone, you find the pull station that's activated, which is pretty easy. If you're at the panel, you look to your right. Well, it doesn't say activated, so let's go to the other room. So when you go to the other room, oh look, it says activated. See, it's a BG12. Now we reset the system. What's all that rattling about? Alright, shut up. So yeah, that was the demo of the other pull station. I don't know why I have other end of line resistors in here. I don't really need these to be honest. I didn't really record a proper outro for this video, so um... BYE!